Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to LCK Summer 2020. I'm Atlas. I am joined by LS for day one of week two. Week one was super cool, especially if you've got OCD and you're looking at the standings. 4 3 2 1 0 0 1 2 3 4. Absolutely felt amazing. But it didn't feel amazing if you were a Gen G fan or if you're a T1 fan. I think expectations were a lot higher yeah. for those two teams. But if you like Darmon Gaming, Damn, was week one a week for you? Yeah, that was a pretty good week for Dom Juan to have a resurgence coming into summer. They looked really dominating in all of their games. Yeah. Really bringing back the Dom Juan of old sort of vibes. And all throughout LCK, some stuff has been pretty wonky for the most part. There has yeah. been some ups and downs, some confusion, and maybe week two will help shore up some of the questions people are having. Yeah, I mean, I think that like some of the struggles, the trials and tribulations, as all of our OCD fans are very excited about observing the one zeros <laughs> and the zero one two three fours. Um, outside of that, though, I mean, the teething issues that we had was based on the teams not really understanding how to utilize aggression. But I think it's really good that we've had some more bloodthirsty games. Yeah. I think that the LCK is realizing that we do need a change, and uh, the teams that are already good at it are obviously like reveling in uh, what has been a, a change in the meta. And uh, Dom on a Freaker and Dragon X, there is absolutely no surprise that they're in top three because these were our Sinner teams anyway, Yeah. right? Like, a Freaker was always the team that was able to win game one in like every single match this was with a completely different roster. And they're still holding on to that form that look, we're going to pick for the early game and uh, and go aggressive. And then Mystic's going to carry us at every uh, opportunity after that. And that's why he's sitting at the top of the POG ratings. 100% of his team's victories was Mystic picking up a POG. Yeah, I mean, he ends up getting 400 points. And Beryl is up there as well with 300. And Atlas, you know what I'm thinking? I we got to shell out a little bit. Chovy is uh, he's struggling down there, so. Yeah, that's true. We're going to make sure to fix points. that. This is because Carrier is too good. So I think we need to bench Carrier and make sure that that's Chovy fine. can get all of the POG votes. As we're going to check out some of the pick ban stats, Varus, goodbye, my friend. And I think that is still going to remain. Oh. This was on patch 10-11. Uh, we are moving to patch 10-12. Guess what? Varus lost 0.1 this AD ratio. that Trundle, Set, Ezreal, Karma, and Varus are guaranteed to receive nerfs in 1014. I find per Riot's 95% yeah, rule. And I think that that's actually fine, apart from Set's case, who I don't think necessarily needs a nerf, because he hasn't been necessarily showing that he's overpowered at least in I mean, the just, Yeah, I mean, just take a look at Ezreal there. Uh, three wins and 12 <laughs> losses. I mean, if someone stop him, you know what I mean? Like, Let's uh, let's, let's not talk about Korean Ezreal, shall we? Yeah. Um, that used to be such a beautiful thing. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Uh, Karma as well, sitting at Ooh. five and six. As uh, Here we go. 10.12, Volley Bear has been unleashed on us. Thankfully, Yorick Bernison did receive himself a few changes and we'll see whether we, like uh, the LEC, like the LCS, are going to uh, have him grace us with his uh, illustrious Rolling Thunder presence. As uh, Senna also received a, a couple of buffs, especially if she's going to be farming, I think went up about 7% uh, if she kills the minion uh, as far as a chance to receive a soul. That is definitely good news. Um, and Zyra Khan, we already saw them be strong last patch, and this might be a direct buff to uh, T1 if we see more of that. Brand in the mid lane got some buffs based on mana regen, but we don't really mind about that. And Akali being buffed makes everyone who's going against Showmaker and Chovy very, very, very scared. Yeah, so I think the, the really big change here, it, well, it is the Volley Bear. So Vo Volley Bear, he's been getting picked up in LCS. He's been getting picked up in LEC. We're probably going to end up seeing him in Korea. And if the other regions have been any indication of what that's going to mean, it's going to mean that he's not ever going to uh, get counterpicked and he's going to be fine. So <laughs> in that regard, you know, I mean, oh, God, it's going to be totally fine. Yep. And uh, here we are. Um, Q got nerfed, guys. Varus is still 100% pick ban. Uh, it's not going to change. We've seen other regions go to 10-12. And uh, yeah, nothing changed over there either. Yasuo nerfs, no one cares. Trundle got a little bit nerfed, but otherwise uh, I think he's probably still going to see a fair bit of play. I don't think it was about his W. Yeah, I mean, Fiddlesticks, uh, uh, well, Yasuo is 
I mean, I think he'll, he'll still be picked when you want to pick Yasuo in the team composition. Varus doesn't really do a whole bunch. The Trundle change, I don't think it actually impacts competitive as much as it impacts solo queue. Yeah. Just because of the way that coordination is had. Cassiopeia, I believe, is actually a buff. Because it's a buff to mid nerf. lane, right? Yeah it, yeah, it buffs her mid lane, and she, she's only going to come in when she wants to anyway. So Fiddlesticks also, we haven't really seen him. There's also the Guardian that was actually just undone last night, less than 12 hours ago. The 10-13 uh -huh. patch notes dropped. This was undone because apparently the win rate or something, it, it was went up dramatically. Predator got buffed. You can use it more often, which is what Good. you really want. And the approach velocity change means that there's more setups with your teammates. Unflinching is very obnoxious, depending on what champion you're playing. And then the ghost change is also very big. This can potentially mean that we stop seeing some teleport in mid, and certain champions will take the ghost. This is also very big for Darius, although I don't think we'll see Darius. I mean, Darius was already taking ghost and flash anyway. Big for Nasus, too. But we're not going to see Nasus. Susan. Is there a way Volley Bear could utilize Ghost? Maybe we see oh. Ixu come in with like Ghost Ignite Volley Bear, the yeah. dream. Just get off the desk. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, hey, it's Ixu. He does crazy stuff. <laughs> That's the only thing that I was uh, I was iterating. Is we are going to go into our first matchup, and it is Team Dynamics versus Solo One Prince. Um, these two teams very familiar with one another from Challenger. This was uh, it goes back to when Dynamics were the ES Sharks, yes. and uh, of course, Solo One Prince were APK Prince, as you guys well know from the previous season of the LCK. But they sort of promoted one after the other, and we'll see which one is going to reign supreme. Yep. As uh, we'll see also whether Mickey is going to roll higher on his dice, because we got some Snake Eyes in the last matchup, and uh, Mickey looked absent. Yeah, and I mean, I think that we're probably going to expect a lot of ups and downs from SP. And Dynamics, though, I mean, Dynamics are pretty interesting because they've been looking pretty stable. They clearly have a lot of cohesion as a team. And that's what also makes it pretty interesting for them to fight for middle of the pack. So I do imagine that, as always, the draft's going to be important between these two teams. We'll see what Hybrid can end up doing. And I, I want to see some 200 years. Well, uh, we'll see whether the 200 years is going to be effective because we did observe that it can be counted. Things can be done against this champion. Nah. It was uh, it was a beautiful, cathartic time on Sunday. Nope. Um, but yeah, that, that's a Sunday move, isn't it? We're, we're back to Wednesday. <laughs> this, is, this is where it doesn't necessarily work out. So that 20% Ezreal win rate is most likely going to continue as we see Aphelios is just crush him. There weren't really too many changes uh, that affected Aphelios either, so he's still just going to be as obnoxious as uh, as we expect. As we go into some of the team stats here, um, not exactly the greatest uh, for either of these teams. Both of them sitting at one and one. Um, a plus one for Team Dynamics, who managed to get a 2-0 and then took a game in their second match, uh, which was against Afrika. They won the first game and then uh, sort of fell off a cliff in the last couple. And uh, Solo and Prince had, you know, a decent opening. You know, they came out swinging and then got obliterated by yeah. Dom One. Yep. And I mean, SP, I, I think that they're still going to really have to find their identity. This matchup is really good for a lot of fans that are wondering exactly where do these two teams really place in relation to each other and in the top standing. And another thing is that both of these teams do look better than Hanwha Life, than Sandbox at this current point in time. So this is going to be pretty good indicator and if dynamics really comes out and stomps here today there's actually almost legitimately an argument for them to maybe make it to like fifth yeah and stay there potentially i actually think fifth place is wide open at the yeah. because yeah. i think we've established uh assuming that t1 and genji are going to bounce back after their rough first week i think we've established that it's t1 genji drx and damwon as our top yeah. four teams yes. not in that order the elite but they four. should be our elite four right yeah and then fifth place is so up in the air. Yeah. It used to be KT, but KT's changed a lot. We didn't necessarily see that much from them. It could be one of these two teams. As it we see, uh, will be Ixu Flawless, Mickey, Hybrid, and Secret. And uh, we'll see where Mickey's going to be rolling here today. Uh, as far as this match is concerned, against Kuzan, it's probably going to be a better matchup than it was against Showmaker. Honestly, the thing that I'm, I'm just 
so excited about is I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing some new diversity in the bot lane. I'm talking Ezreal versus Philios. Oh my I god. I am looking forward to it. You don't get to see it that often. No, you really honestly. don't. You really Definitely don't. Definitely a unique matchup. And yeah, I've been I've been watching a lot of games from 2018. Yeah. I didn't see any of Felios. There I wasn't didn't. one I, game. Yeah, I was watching VODs from like 2015, 2016, and yeah. a guy that's been around since 200 years. I mean, I'm not, I know, right? Not really it's sure. Crazy, outrageous. Key player Rich versus Ixu. And this is interesting because Rich's champion pool is actually very weak to Ixu's. Oh yeah, and it's just and, weak in general. Whereas Ixu right. plays every champion. Yes. Unless it's in the meta. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, I just want an Alawi. This is all This is all I want. Is yep, it, it's, it's the dream. It's not too much to ask for. It really isn't. And uh, just remember, save the date. December 11th, 1819. Just remember that. <laughs> when we're going back in time. <laughs> That's when Aphelios was born. <laughs> All right, well, Mickey's certainly feeling ready for this match. Having a big old yawn there on the stage. I apologize to anyone. Uh, who just had to yawn because they just observed Mickey yawning. Um, that's not your fault. Yawns are very contagious, and I can understand that. Uh, Secret got a bit of a recolor on the hair. He's way blonder than he used to be, and uh, we'll see whether that actually has any impact as we've got two blonde supports uh, going into this particular match. I don't know what it is with LCK players and dyeing their hair. There has been a massive obsession with just constantly dyeing your hair different colors. I know that uh, in, in, in the StarCraft days, it was a means to generate attention for yourself as a player when you weren't getting it, or you felt like you weren't getting it. All right. So it's um, attention-seeking behavior broadcasted. I mean, yeah, you know, well, Interesting. there's... Honestly, it is a pretty, pretty five-head play, if I do say so myself. I mean, that's why I got you it. You just noticed it, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. You talked about it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I mean, for longer I... than you would have. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like... I mean, they are in this game, so we're probably <laughs> going to talk about Guga and Secret, but uh, whether we do it positively or not is uh, something we're yet to find out, but something we have just found out are what the first few bands are going to be. Twist of Fate and Elise taken away by Team Dynamics, and Solo One Prince do get rid of a couple of 80 carries here in the Varus and the Senna. Absolutely no surprise that the Varus gets banned once again. Uh, we're expecting to never see Varus ever again. Um, well, it's sort of <laughs> where I'm at. Varus, uh, probably not ever really going to make it through. Now, again, I'm really hoping that we get to see a new bot lane matchup here today. So um, I, I would hope. Yeah, right. yeah, so here we go. We're lock, lock in, in Ezreal. Ezreal. Yeah. 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 Right that, drop that. Oh, oh Elios, oh. okay. <laughs> and he's being disabled, by the way. Um, yeah. But we don't care about power. that. We're power. waiting for, for Hybrid to lock in the Ezreal. The hard counter to right. Elios. Lock it in. <laughs> Now, I've actually been pretty vocal about this on Twitter and elsewhere about Aphelios. We even talked about it on the Pog State. Yep. That thematically, he does have weaknesses. Oh, absolutely. And Rain morphers, long range. <laughs> now, I if love they how we're pick, talking about it. It's just, it just happens, you know? So, okay, Ezreal and Yumi come in. These are both on theme with the stuff that Aphelios hates. Yeah, absolutely. Now, let's not round this out with a R3 melee champion, R4 melee champion. Oh, it's going to be Nautilus. Okay. Uh, Nautilus into... Oh, you mean for Dynamics? Yeah, Dynamics. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm okay. just, just going through uh, down the line. Um, and the next one is going to be a jungle pick. Let's have a look. Olaf. It'll be Olaf to deny Yumi Olaf. What do you reckon? Perfect. Honestly, I never couldn't have thought of anything brighter myself. Well, I'm, a, I'm just a really smart guy. A little bit of a savant, yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that Beyond is going to do something different. And Beyond does have a very wide champion pool. He could go towards something like a Graves, but... There it is. Obviously, I'd read the script. Uh, yeah. I don't get the script that often, so I'm just... I don't get it I'm abusing either, it. Honestly. I apologize. Jason has been lacking on now, giving the script, you know? I would be very happy if Solo One Prince just picked Zoe here, because we get to talk about Team Rocket immediately. Huh. They need to pick melee champions. Let's get Jarvan oh, in here. Oh, right. Versus Aphelios. Alawi. Yeah, let's let's get Jarvan. I'm really looking for a Jarvan. Rek'Sai. Ooh. Right Rek up my alley. Rek'Sai. Let's go. Come It'll on. It'll probably be one lead. time. Oh, never mind. Okay. We got a LeBlanc. Well, never mind. No, not that. All right. Well, Jesse just went a bit evil. That's yeah. all right. That's all right. That's totally fine. As Lissandra is going to be banned away, still is considered a pretty strong counter against LeBlanc. And Dynamics, I'm actually not even sure where they're going to go with their bans here because things are still wide open. We might just see a random Alawi get Yeah, I, I, I actually think you just focus on Ixu's uh, champion because pool. Because there's so much 
magic damage on the side of SP right now. And Alawi obviously deals enormous amounts of physical. Of physical. Now, this is one of those those bands that it always confuses me, right? You, you have a Philios right now. You're feeling pretty happy. You should want them to choose champions like Lee Sin and then just negate them in the later stages, especially because you have counterpick available to you in mid lane. You can really control the pacing of it. And with the Olaf, you're not really worried about any sort of loss of priority or anything like that. So, Galio gets removed, another champion that is good against LeBlanc. We're probably not going to see Ryze or Malzahar or anything like them end up coming out, and there's the Alawi Ben. Yep, I like it. They got there in the end. And uh, Solo One Prince, what are they going to go for? Looks like Flawless's Jarvan is being considered at the minute. And uh, look, <laughs> uh, we are just, we're lazy today, aren't we? We're just <laughs> straight up reading off the script. Oh. I can't, man. I can't. <laughs> I, really I can't. apologize, you guys. It's we gonna should, be the death of me. We should. We should really try and lie to you about how much we know ahead of time about what's gonna be happening <laughs> in the draft. It's, uh, uh, we didn't even need to talk about the fact that Rich is gonna lock in the Aatrox. The best part for me is that I'm saying it un uh, ironically. <laughs> like, yeah. Of course, they're gonna go Jarvan here. You know? Yeah. What I, I like to roll the die. What makes the least sense? And I go. <laughs> Well, Cinder is also not surprising anyone if it's going to be locked in, but uh, another one. The Pigeon Man in the yep. mid lane. Very standard composition here coming out of Team Dynamics. And that's okay. You know, you start the day with a very standard comp. I feel like the Olaf so, is ooh, pretty out of, price, uh, out, of price, out of place in this comp, as the Zoe yes. is the final switch, which uh, does okay into so, the block. This is where I really don't even... Uh, well, it, it's very awkward, because you need a physical damage champion here because you just have so much magic. I mean, they might Volley Bear. They could They might actually man. Volley Bear. I, he's hybrid damage, but... There it is. Oh, man. All right, so Volley Bear actually loses to Atrox, but the thing is, is that a, pro players don't have a lot of games versus or with Volley Bear. So there's a lot of limited experience and Atrox has to play the matchup differently. Now, Rich, however, is sort of like an Atrox one trick. So I actually wonder how proficient he is on the matchup and if he knows how to play it in a way that Volley Bear really can't survive, at least in, in terms of having control over the laning phase. But with Yumi, it is scary later. However, Dynamics, I mean, they've been rewarded, right? We, we ironically said that they would pick melee champions that engage into Aphilios. What did they do? They picked melee champions that would engage into Aphilios. So, here comes another Reddit thread as <laughs> <laughs> the coach is going to walk off the stage. Oh. Aphilios did nothing wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. For 200 years, he was a saint. It's absolutely fine. As uh, this is your very standard composition coming out of Team Dynamics, not necessarily the most cohesive, but uh, if you go down the tier list in each role, things are looking okay. Uh, meanwhile, on the side of Solo One Prince, they do have the new and improved Volley Bear on the top side of the map, Yorick Burnison, bringing down some of that thunder. As our uh, flawless in the jungle on his Jarvan, Mickey on his LeBlanc, and we do have James and Meowth on the bottom side. So I, I imagine that Dynamics, I mean, they're, they're heavily favored. They had everything, or SP had a very strong R1 through R3. Ezreal, Yumi, and LeBlanc was totally fine. But then they drafted two champions that really are going to pull the others down with them. This is like watching the Titanic sink. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I actually love this skin now. I have no idea so what SP are going to do in the later stages of the game, because now the Atrox is sort of rewarded. Well, at least Ixu can show Team Dynamics where they can park their aeroplane. Now, I think that's important. I really like the, well, I mean, Atrox probably isn't going to open anything else, but Doron Shield versus Volley Bear is nice. I'm curious to see if Rich intentionally takes Chain Lightning passives in order to heal himself. Oh, again, that ward. That ward is, honestly, that is a, that, that's... MVP. Yeah, actually, it really is. And you'd think that maybe Dynamics had have watched a VOD of last week. Many on well, the as our, ooh, we've stepped away. We're, we're on the Riot Rift this time. Ooh. It's been the LCK Rift for a while. What's the Riot? Is there any differences? See, I mean, yeah, I, I noticed that, that. I mean, the differences are the banners, I think. But uh, okay. other than that, I think uh, sweepers have slightly less range, and that's why it honestly, it looks like, uh, is, is it 
uh, Ogremar, the red. Yeah, it is a bit Ogremar ish. Yeah. And so maybe we've just dipped over to the Horde. Yeah. Um, and based on the drafts, it's been like that. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> oh dear. Kuzan actually uh, trading very nicely with Mickey here in the early game. But uh, probably not something Mickey's going to worry about. Both of them popping their corrupting potions and uh, just threading some needles pretty nicely here is this Zoe. And you can see Olaf immediately just going for an invade. Flawless is going to use his sweeper. And now he seems very indecisive. It looks like he's looking to Sin. And honestly, you can't spell Sin without EQ, so. There it is. Uh, you can, actually. Uh, sin doesn't have either of those letters. Oh, it's silent. Ah, hmm. uh, yeah. not a big deal. Sinek. Uh, Snack. Le Snack. I, I see what you did there. Caught me, actually. Oh, yeah. man. That's interesting. He, he's not walking up to get hit by chain lightning. <laughs> Strange. So, yeah, I'm not totally sure what's going on there. <laughs> and so, Volley Bear, he's not actually going to go for a cheater recall either. So, this is actually a very good lane state for Atrox in the top lane. And you can see Atrox, he has the second wind as well. Sure. And he, with Goron Shield, you should want to keep getting hit by Volley Bear's passive. Because it will heal you. Yeah. So, should constantly stay in range of that passive. But Rich, judging by just how the, the waves are going and what's happening, it looks like he's probably unfamiliar. It is certainly looking matchup. like that. It is early days, though, and things are very even as the lanes do reset. Gonna have a look at this on a very interesting matchup here in the mid lane. Kuzan, when he was back on the Jinair Green Wings, faced off against Vicky a bunch of times. It felt like I've, uh, feels to me like I've watched the Rocks Tigers matchup a few more times. That is what I'm familiar with when it comes to these two players. But when he was back on Afrika, uh, also uh, faced off against Kuzan. Kuzan was two years on uh, Jinair. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mickey played on Rebels Anarchy, actually, yeah. before they even turned into the Freaking Freaks. Freak. Uh, there's the Flash. Beyond is going to get taken down very low, but the Follow Flash is there for Mickey, but he is going to go into his bubble as uh, Kuzan picks up exactly what he wants to there, but does gather himself a Flash as well. There's the Ignite, puts that one down, oh and there's the Flash forward, God. and Rich fails the Flash as now the top laners are wandering after one another, and uh, Ixu is not going to enter that brush. So it is a series of unfortunate events. 100%. Oh, Lemonese can Volley Bear get the E? As, uh, there is no, the no, cleanse no. out from Kuzan. And yeah, not going to find the E there. So there was a lot of mechanical blunders happening here by both sides, but SP does walk away with the first blood. And Zoe, on the recall, actually going to pick up Boots and Amp Tome. And so let's take a look at this. Kuzan, he has Protobell available. Now, Beyond should flash the, the knockup. He gets chained, comboed by everything, ends up giving over the kill to Mickey. Now, Kuzan, he wants to pick up the flash, so the Protobell, not getting as much value, picks up the Ignite, and then the camera, like it did in the live game, did end up cutting to the top lane. Rich ends up failing his flash. And Ixu did not actually have the damage to kill him. Did not elect to keep chasing, even with the movement speed on the Q. However, in live, I mean, he is ahead on or in the CS department. Yeah, things are actually just fine for Rich, as it turns out. Neither of the top laners with their teleports or their flashes. Um, but Ixu still feeling pretty comfy here. As yep. The Sky Splitter comes down, does buff up the Volley Bear, as Beyond is in exactly the position that he wants. And Rich. I mean, he did manage to get that combo off right there. When, when you're playing Atrox versus Volibear in this matchup, you never uh, want to use... He's dead, guys. Yep, he's uh, dead. That's just how that one's going to go. You don't get quite enough of a shield from that one. So in the, in the atrox Volibear matchup, you never want to really use E offensively. You always want to save it for when Volibear tries to go for his Q and the pounce onto you. You can knock him up, interrupt, he'll get it back, it's fine. You chain Infernal Chains, and then he has to make a decision to either just get pulled back in or absorb your whole combo. And even if he trades back against you with his Storm Lightning, you're still going to end up winning the trade. And so Atrox just has to play the matchup with a more defensive stance and just relying on autos and traditional Q spacing. Yeah. Then using his Umbral Dash to reposition it. I mean, if you do that, that, it's it's funny because he's like changed and also has it because he's still extremely kind of. So I'm not going to be able to talk about it, Mickey. 
It's gonna get exhausted here as Kuzan finds the bubble. And there is no plans, remember, that is so much damage. Oh! Not gonna quite pick up the kill, though, as uh, Flawless comes in to save the day. And so Mickey barely managing to live right there. Gonna share a lot of EXP with Flawless. Meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, though, not a whole lot of action happening. Ezreal does have the Tear of the Goddess already complete. Yumi with the Dark Seal and the Fairy Charm. Flawless just gonna give away a Control Ward. And then, meanwhile, Atrox yet again, I guess, just respecting the Bully Bear. He has World Ender. I mean, Bully Bear does have his ultimate as well. Is just gonna. What? I don't know what's going on anymore. Um, I guess he's. He, I guess he's scared of him jumping on Let me his. Let break cow. it down for you. Q E Q W Q from the Olaf E by the Olaf into the Q from the Olaf. So I had to pay me the big bucks. Damn. Yeah. You knew exactly what they all did. <laughs> Whoa. I would never have known. Well, uh, take it away, out. It certainly did not look like it was uh, too difficult, and uh, Ixu just running in there, uh, hoping that the little Sky Splitter Shield is going to be enough to allow him to win that matchup is uh, something that I wasn't necessarily expecting to work, and as it turned out, it did. His first tower plate is going to go to the Aphelios in this lane. As uh, hybrids looking to try and trade back, they do get a prowling. Nope, they don't get a prowling projectile. I just assumed Secret was going to land that one. Well, the Aphelios and Nautilus. I mean, this is starting to enter the, the stage of the game where Ezreal, after the next reset, is going to be pretty comfortable for the remainder of the laning phase. Guger going to go for a pretty big trade. Yeah. Still has a bit of mana left as uh, Hybrid, so he should be fine. And in fact, it's kind of deceptive because he stacked up that, uh, that tier relatively effectively. That mana pool is very high. Uh, so, as the dust settles, it's... About a 1,000 gold lead here for Team Dynamics, and we knew that Aphelios is going to win. So yeah. uh, that's just what happens. And Beyond's going to take this time now to solo the Rift Herald, and I, I really like what I'm seeing up here in top lane, as this is the first game of top Bully Bear. Historically, pre rework Bully Bear had two wins and seven losses in the jungle, 10 wins and 14 losses in the support role. And he was coming online as a, a counter to Yumi, but in this matchup, there's Two things I like seeing. I like seeing an Atrox win it, and then the other thing is, well, hold on. Well, there's the ulti out from Ixu, and uh, Rich just presses his R button. That seems to be enough of a counter as Guga. Not going to quite find that, but they do get the flash out of Mickey. Beyond's over here, clearing out a control ward. Flawless still lying in wait. As I mean, if you can say anything about Volibear, he at least looks amazing. He does no. look cool. Personally, I'm not a very big fan of that skin, the police Foley Bear. It sounds cool, the animations, if you've ever played it, but yeah, yeah. I think his base skin is one of the best in the game. And then there's the defensive E positioning again. But uh, the other thing I like seeing is that unlike the players in NA and EU, Ixu does seem to be going Gunblade. A lot of people building Trinity Force. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, a, the, not a Trinity Force. Not, not, not a not a believer. Don't like Trinity Four. I think it's really bad. Well, it used to work. But uh, you can understand why it doesn't yeah. now. There's a uh, hybrid just trying his best to offer some poke back. It's just not working. It just feels like the Abelios is doing exactly what he wants to in this lane. Even though there is now a Sheen built up by Hybrid on his next back, Flawless spots exactly where Beyond is as Kuzan comes over with a hijacked ghost of the new and improved variety. Slight level advantage for Beyond. As Ixu trapped underneath his turret, and this CS advantage is yeah, just really keeps getting starting bigger to get bigger. out of control, yeah. And Rich is weaving in a lot of good trades. Ixu can't really keep up. He might cancel this recall. This recall might be fake, because his TP is almost up. But no, he's going to actually channel it, maybe thinking that he needs it for bottom, but I'm not sure if it's going to be available. Beyond and Kuzan try to rotate down, but Dynamics are just in total control of this game. And it feels a little bit like Solo One are in disarray. Yeah. As uh, the Revolver, as we expected, is going to be picked up here by Ixu as he wanders back towards top lane. Um, I mean, it's not, they're not necessarily trading better than the Ezreal Yumi, but they're farming better. Yeah. And so actually, the trade-up doesn't matter. And the, the scary thing is that in 45 seconds, Ocean Dragon, it's probably going to go over to Dynamics almost 
every single scenario that you would run from this game state. And then that's going to mean that they're threatening Soul Point in 10 minutes while having a better team composition. And there's a Volley Bear that is behind. So it's sort of like there's a 6v4 going on right now. Yeah. And also, Ixu just, he takes a lot of damage because there's no defensive itemization yeah. at all. And so this is exactly what an Aatrox wants, actually. Yes. And this is where it's it's really be weird because I think versus Atox you have to go Bramble first. Yeah. 100%. Now, or at least an execution is calling. Like one of those. As there's the ulti out, Rich takes a bit of damage there, but he's looking just to trade. Flash has to come in from Ixu after he was the one instigating. Yeah. And now Rich is almost back to being full HP and Holy Bear. Yeah, picks himself yeah. up a shield. Oh, yeah. Rift Herald summoned in mid lane. And it, it's going to be fun because we're in store for a lot of Holy Bear picks, and I'm excited to be able to talk to. I have like 160 games on him. Damn, we've done some work. <laughs> since the rework. So. <laughs> I mean, you do like bears. You are an Annie player, so obviously the, it's like the, playing look, Tibbs the, the whole time. Is my mascot, okay? Hey, that's true. The stuffed teddy bear. That's true. It's uh, you know, just the thing. But it all makes sense. Itemization, I, I, I think that the champion is kind of complex in how he builds versus the field of champs in top. I think he has unique build paths for every matchup, which is interesting because we don't have a lot of champs that actually are a Build-A-Bear. Yeah, <laughs> Build-A-Bear, I get it. Where you're constantly itemizing differently for the matchups. And I can understand what Ixu is really trying to achieve, but if you rush Revolver, you rush Vamp Scepter, Unless you get an edge early, you're never winning the trades against him. You need the Bramble Vest yeah. to stifle Atrox in the early lane phase, and then just to provide you some durability. And I like how Rich played it out. Tier 2 boots early, and then just going into his future items. Looks like he's opting for maybe Death Stance first, and he really just dominated Ixu. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything Ixu can do in this lane now. Uh, especially when it's not underneath his turret, as the lane right now is completely equalized. Docked on there, happily denies a uh, cannon minion before smashing this wave down in pure LCK fashion. It's uh, it's very warm here in Korea at the moment, so freezing is not something we're going to do. Nor is it something that they necessarily need to at the moment. Keeping on the pressure does make some sense. And collecting these turret plates is a good idea. Hybrid's doing what he can to avoid that. Is he gone? He's gone for a very defensive Whoa. card. As uh, Arcane Shift is very good. A decent dredge line there from Guga to show that he's got his eye in. Yeah, I spawned Gauntlet already completed before the uh, Mana Mute, but very close to uh, putting that item together as well. And here comes another roam. So, well, it's not even a roam. Laning phase is over as soon as the turret dies. But! Yep, this is just the dive as uh, Guga's down to about half, but Mickey's gonna come in. Try to save his teammates, doesn't get the stun on the chains, but the damage has been done here, guys. Dynamics do take down the outer turret bottom lane and just continue to uh, to win in every yeah. possible lane without necessarily getting too many kills. It's just the pressure is on. Yeah, I mean, every single lane is winning. They ended up getting, I believe, uh, 10 turret plates or nine turret plates total. Dynamics. And every single lane just won. I mean, you have a lane kingdom happening up in top lane, and again, Really happy to see it. Unfortunate, I don't know if ProView exists right now. I know uh, that ProView is supposed to be down in other regions. I don't know if LCK still has it, but... I think L LCK is a little bit of a different situation because it's independent. Like, it's yeah. a 5G exclusive thing. Um, so I right. don't really know too much about what the state of it is at the moment. You know about Shanghai? What? <laughs> no, never, probably not, I guess. <laughs> I didn't even know what word you just said. It's a I'd... type of rock. Ah, right. <laughs> like, like, like graphite? I know graphite isn't a rock, but it's got a cool <laughs> lattice structure. Do you know what I know about? I know about pod racing. Okay. That's what I know about. All right. Tell me about it. I've been going back to my roots. Uh, Star Wars Pod Racer was re-released on Nintendo I Switch. It was my third game I ever owned on the N64. Very, very exciting. That was a good game. That really, that really was a good game. I like the I old, respect it. The, the like customizing your your racer aspect and stuff like that. I thought that was really cool. Okay. You know, and you can collect new ones and things like that. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm it's just good stuff. The, the the Star Wars games used to be really, really good. I'm not sure about any of the recent ones, but there was also the uh, the Jedi power battles that you could play with a friend. Yep. Did you ever play that one? And also there was a. Uh, 
what was it, Shadows of the Empire? Yeah. That yeah. game was so was good. good. The original Hoth battle before they redid it. In, right. Uh, what was it? Rebel Leader? Rogue Leader. Rogue, Rogue Leader. Yeah. Because yep. Rogue Squadron was the OG. That was the best. Anyway, uh, I digress uh, pretty heavily, largely because the game has certainly not looked like something that uh, Solo and Prince have much of a chance of coming back into unless yeah. they really I do change the how they're going to play. The thing is, is that even, uh, I mean, the, the, the next Infernal Dragon is going to be the closest point that they ever are, because if you look at the item breakpoints with the way that Dynamics accelerated in this game, what's going to happen is, is that SP is going to be at their one core item basically across the board. And right now, Dynamics are going to be at one and a half core items. So this is going to be the most achievable victory that they can get. But five and a half, six minutes into the future from now, Dynamics is going to be at two core versus SP is one and a half, <laughs> which is going to be an insufferable breakpoint to try to fight back against. And that'll be soul point. So this is really where the game's decided here. Make it a look. is going to go golden as Ixu. About half health at the moment, oh! but just popped by the Zoe. Meanwhile, Apelios has been taken down, and that means that there is a chance here for Solo on a fantastic dredge line as Flawless limps away from this fight. But Hybrid's not going to be so lucky. And Dynamics are now going to put down Shirley and see whether they can continue pressing this lead forward. And they're going to end up using this Rift Hell. They're going to... Oh! oh. oh. Uh... Sleepy times for Mickey, She's but so it looks tired, like in front of go back. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's a double charge. That is well, I'm not sure if that flash was worth from Kuzan. That was his normal flash, right? Uh, yes, that? I believe. Y yes, indeed. And so now they're going to get the Infernal Dragon. Now, this is going to be pretty poggers. Let's take a look at this 106 How on Olaf to 110. Almost half a longsword. So, a not really a lot of help for him. He's building Cinder Hulk and Pure Tank, but. Yeah, I think that Rich probably looking a little bit better. Yeah. And uh, Aphelios is also going to feel good about that one. And yeah, we just take a look at how this happened. And honestly, LeBlanc showing Aphelios what 200 years can be like. As then, this was honestly a really nice attempt to disengage by SP. Yep. But Dynamics just really quick to react. They're so far ahead. Now they have the Infernal. And the problem is that at Soul Point, they're going to be up the core item. So I can't imagine a world where they end up winning from this point. I think this game is looking very doomed. Bully Bear is useless. And this is the thing I... <laughs> Unfortunately, have to tell you, Alice, is that I think that we're going to see a lot of Oli Bear picks, and the champion is he's a hot mess. Well, uh, it's looking like a hot mess in this game, and maybe uh, the rest of the teams are not going to be uh, going to risk it uh, in the first week of his availability. I mean, if anyone was going to play it, it was going to be X, right? 100%. Yeah. Um, and I think that's fine. Unfortunately, the, now the I hope he doesn't play it in game two. Get the Bramble Vest. I know, right? I, I did see that. I thought that's what you were going to talk about. <laughs> no, that's that's just where things get really, really yeah. unfortunate. Well, the Oblivion Orb was picked up by Zoe, and I see a blasting wand, and it's making me a little bit afraid. But nonetheless, Black Cleaver is being picked up on Atrox. Warmog's already complete on Olaf. And then he's just going to try to get to the Giant's Belt. But the next team fight is going to be unwinnable by SP. They're down 4,500, but that's not the real problem. I mean, you factor in the Infernal Drake amplification to the stats, and then you factor in the, the core item recipe that they're going to end up being up. So the only way that SP win this is if somehow hybrid. Yeah, just, he's going to have to be a complete hero. But yeah. right now, he's only got two items. He really wants Death Dance to really be able to stand up uh, with Team Dynamics. Dokdam even has a uh, Hex Drinker to keep himself alive when Mickey dives on him. And it's likely that he will be able to survive for a lot longer than he did in the previous team fight. But uh, I think the, the Blasting one's actually fine, right? Like, it, if they win a fight in two and a half minutes, then they probably win the game. And so completely uh, Morellonomicon deny a bit of the Zoomies healing. And uh, Bob's your uncle will walk away with a victory uh, for Team Dynamics, which actually means a lot for the standings, especially for a new team. Yeah. They're freshly promoted here in the summer season. But uh, this is just a crushing effort thus far. Yeah, I really think uh, they've taken every objective 
uh, in comparison to Zero from uh, Solo One Prince's side. So both of the Rift Heralds, they've taken three Drakes and they've taken four turrets. And SP just haven't been able to get out of their side of the map. And at this point, it looks like SP are, I mean, they're just gonna try to siege this mid tier one turret. They have Flawless attached with Yumi on the right hand side. Now Duck Dom's gonna actually walk up as the cannon was getting low, but a lot of chip damage by hybrid. I just don't understand in what world does Dynamics really find a way to botch this and throw it all away. We've been, the... we've been surprised before. We but uh, look, I'm not sure whether that, that's going to happen either. I mean, have a look at the items. Merlinomicon just completed in time for this Infernal Drake. Not necessarily the greatest news, but does help against the Yumi. Uh, but I'm looking at that Black Cleaver that Rich has just done as well. Yeah. That is and a lot of power. Hex Drinker and Zeal for Aphilios. Even though it's not a, an entire core item completion, the Hex Drinker is massive. Yeah against SP's team composition. So, 50 seconds until that dragon. I'm actually curious if maybe Duck Dom can get enough gold to complete to an item if they can give him some resources. Probably not. They're just going to go and clear out vision. They're going to take that Scryer, maybe even the Blast Plant as Gugger just trying to place down some wards. Rich on the Prestige Edition Atrox is going to be clearing out some of the wards here. Yep. Also spots Flawless, who will take a uh, Paddle Star for his trouble. Beyond down to half health, not with too much recovery available from this particular composition. There's uh, Ixu on the flank, but Kuzan's going to be here. It's a good knocker. Blast Cone can be utilized, but it's not going to work. Kuzan just pops him, and I have no idea what Ixu was trying to do there. Um, but dying probably wasn't it. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great hook from Guru as well. Squall is going to go down very, very low. Has to get himself out of there. The Ignite skill oh! just flashes on over. Secret now jumps onto Hybrid. This guy is the one that needs to win them the game as the final chapter comes in. Fair bit of damage onto Rich, but he is safe for the moment. And Kuzan picks up a flash, decides to not invest it as Mickey gets spotted. And we'll have to go the heck out of there. And I, I really like what Dynamics are doing right now. You can see the spam pings onto the Infernal Soul. I feel like if uh, the letters following the D were RX, we would actually see a Baron attempt <laughs> rather than getting the Infernal Soul. So always, always nice to see this. Bully Bear, never, I've never seen a bear so so happy to run towards his death as yeah. he was trying to make something happen. It's just because, you know, they, they're forged in battle. Uh, these armored bears, and uh, they do, it's like, it's like sort of the Viking thing. Can't get to Valhalla. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not entirely sure. He's certainly uh, making a mistake with that particular rotation. It looks to me like Solo One Prince understands that there is not too much hope. I like that Rich knew the exact range of everything and where Jarvan would end up being. That was nice. That's SP, I mean, they were in full-on retreat. There's, there's, there's no way to win this. And I want to take this point, or I, I want to take this moment to really stress that this is going to be yet another chalked-up Ezreal v. Aphilios. <laughs> yeah, I know. had nothing to do nope. with Ezreal Aphilios. And honestly, it, it, it almost had nothing to do with the team composition either. Aphilios really didn't get to do Aphilios things, but it doesn't change the fact that a team willingly, after opening R1, R2, R3, Ezreal, Yumi, LeBlanc, then said, you know what, Aphilios, here's oh, some melee no. champions. Interruption there onto Flawless. He is close enough to his inner turret to survive this. But remember, guys, this is Infernal Soul. And Team Dynamics are extremely strong at this point in time. Four and a half minutes until that Elder Drake spawns, but it's only 25 and a half minutes into the game. Yeah. <laughs> Not totally sure what's going to end up happening. You have Atrox looking like he's coming in here for a flame. Yeah, and the Bubble Bubble comes down as Mickey. Takes a while to get home there as Hybrid's down to about zero health. And in goes the Olaf. Hybrid just dies as an afterthought there to Rich as Moonlight Vigil would have tagged him if he had have stayed alive. But over the oh wall my. goes the Aatrox. And this is why we talk about Rich as one of our better Aatrox players in the LCK. Yes, he has a shallow champion pool, but this is one of the champions in it. Maybe they'll ban it one time. Perhaps. You know, maybe... Maybe, uh, maybe it'll end up getting banned. 
Or maybe they just pick it huh? away, you know? Or maybe they pick a champion that does well in Aether. Oh! Really sure. Holy Bear ult in! Jumps in there, yeah, exactly yeah, right. He's gonna do a fair bit of work, but flashes out, and he's gonna die. 200 years, take that one, my friend. That is going to be a dead Ophelio, so that must have felt cathartic, but a double kill in for the J4 is not going to change the result of this game, as Dynamics, at 27 minutes, will be likely on the dot. Unless they do just back away, yep, they get rid of both of these Nexus turrets and then decide that one lone Ezreal is probably going to be able to kill three people, so they do. Leave that one up just for a little while longer. Can't have too much of a fast win yeah. line, LS. All right. Yeah, we're you know, not trying to outdo Dom one here. No. Not what they're going for. As it looks like they're just going to play it very safe. They can just reset, and honestly, they could run it up mid, and there's no way to lose the team fight. There's really no way to lose the team fight. Now, you want to be really careful, uh -huh. okay? And you want to have a true LTK experience. Well, first, what you're going to want to do is have the World Ender cast under tow, tag the Ezreal, and honestly, Yumi does not look like a balanced champion. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay. Yeah, gonna need a buff, I think. Yeah. I think. <laughs> As Wallace does manage to get away at the very end. Now, Bully Bear coming in here. Look at the amazing sustain here. Ends up ulting. Does pretty much nothing. And Aphilios ends up dying. Otherwise, the game surely would have ended. Dynamic's just gonna get the Baron and then end the game shortly thereafter. Yep, Guga and Rich are uh, just patrolling, making sure that their bodyguards, as Beyond is going to land that smite very nicely. Rich, you can happily face check this one, because actually it's more like they're face checking, not you. There's Mickey not gonna be able to find any flanks just here, but Kuzan, thankfully for Mickey, is not gonna be able to tag him with that trouble bubble. 8,000 gold, largely irrelevant. There are no Nexus turrets, and uh, Dynamics just need to move towards the enemy Nexus and take that most important 50 yeah. gold. And we can see Atrox, I mean, he's coming in there as well. You can see Mickey looking for a flank, but not really going to find anything. Yeah, Dredgeline doesn't find the mark, but he's just looking to hold on to some of these minions. Dockdown has exactly the weapons that he wants to try and do battle for safety. And, uh... Yeah, the open next situation is going to force this engage as Cataclysm comes down. You've got the ulti out of Ixu, but they're just too far behind. They had to make a last ditch effort. It was going to not work, but they still had to do it. I'm glad they did as the Nexus falls down dynamic. Walk away with a very simple first win. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty cut and dry. Very fast game number one, very decisive. And Rich putting on a lane kingdom ends up getting my player of the game vote. I ended up giving it over to him. Yep. I was actually very excited to see that even though something must have went wrong in waves one through three, Rich seemed to know how to do the combos against Volibear and how to play the lane. So that was nice to see because everyone has limited experience against the champion. There's only so many games that you can actually play, and if you're scrimming all the time, how many people are actually picking Volley Bear? Yep. Even if you're playing solo queue, how many times are you running into Volley Bear? So, very nice that he ended up playing Atrox. Will he get it next game? That's always one of the weird question marks, by the way. Well, will uh, the Volley Bear want to be picked in the next game? I have a feeling that, you know, Solo One Prince are probably going to step away from it. Okay. Uh, or ban away the Atrox, you're right. There's, uh, there's certain other options that you can go towards. Um, I'm looking at that Volley Bear and wondering whether anyone is going to have the courage to pick it now um, after what just happened. Because we've seen a lot of champions have quite decent times against the Aatrox. Um, Volley Bear was not an example of one of those. So we're going to have a look at some of the stats. Pretty linear gold graph. It was a very fast 29 minute game. And uh, Kuzan casually doing the most damage in the game. Not bad. But look at that. There's absolutely no objectives outside of like this was honestly five kills away from a perfect game. Yeah. Because everything else just went over to dynamics like it was given to them. And on, I on mean, a Aphelios, silver was, he was running it down. Yeah. Game, you know. I mean, Aphelios is I don't know, so good. About. He's just so good. That he does it all. Yeah. Just incredible. So that was uh, that was definitely the mistake in the draft, was letting the Aphelios through. That one Bruce. was first picked. I mean, Dom is a fantastic Aphelios player, actually, to his credit. He, he had... I think close to 100% uh, win rate on that champion in Challenger. So we'll see whether he gets it again after this short break.
내가 랩을 막아줘. 나이 들어간다 이제. 기즈 속박, 기즈 속박. 아, 맞다. 얘네 나한테 들어왔어. 한 타, 한 타, 한 타. 나 죽었고 일단. 천천히 하면 이길 것 같아. 나 이겼어. 파워스면 끝날 것 같은데. 어, 끝내, 끝내, 끝내. 끝나. 나이스. 버스 감사. 나이스. 나이스. 아, 버스. 아, 너무 힘들어.